Greetings again on November 18th, 2018. This is part two of what I started this morning, a, uh, a video on the Martian math curriculum. And where I left it was on this picture. And I was telling a, a good story of a different way we have in Martian math of multiplying, so sort of implying that the unit volume in Martian math would be this, this tetrahedron here, but then how could that be if when we raise, when we when we look at 2 to the third power as a tetrahedron, wouldn't this then be 8, 2 times 2 times 2, according to be, to be consistent? The way I was talking about raising to the third power, it was a tetrahedron. Well, that's fine. 2 to the third power is 8, but this 2 is expressed in radians, not radians, but radiuses the radius from the center of our canonical sphere, the uh, sphere packing that we're talking about has all unit radius spheres, and we develop our tetrahedron as four of those packed together. The diameter is, of course, also could be uh, considered our unit, and so if that's one, then it is indeed a tetrahedron of edges one and volume one. The corresponding cube has three times the volume and therefore has a volume of three. Now in the XYZ system, we wouldn't say it that way. First of all, either square root of two over two or just plain square root of two, either way, you're not gonna get a whole number volume three when you raise those to the third power. So there's different picture of third powering and the goal then is to figure out some kind of a conversion constant between the XYZ way of doing things and the Buckminster Fuller way of doing things. This is from 1950, and you can see the numbers we're about to uh, encounter. Second root of 9 eighths, 1.06066. That's the conversion constant. To convert the above solids to values in column one, that was the uh, synergetics volume, or it's going one way or the other. I've got the so-called powers of the synergetics constant here on the uh, same page. So where is all that coming from? Let's take a look by pulling up a Python prompt. And here I've got a little interactive script where we import the square root function, renaming it to root two, and compute the XYZ volume of the cube as root two of two, in other words, the edge to the third power. The IVM volume, what we say in synergetics is that very same cube, this cube we've been looking at here, is volume um, three. So the relationship between the two, that's not the cube, that's the tetrahedron. The cube we're talking about is, of course, this one here. If you think of the cube as having volume three, then you're in synergetics world. If you're thinking of the cube as having second root to the third power volume, then you're in XYZ world. And the goal is to have a conversion constant for going back and forth between them, and we call that S3, and it's equal to the second root of 9 eighths, which we were just looking at from Fuller's work as something he was into pretty early as a way of converting. Now, another way of looking at it is using what David Kosky and I call the uh, Tetra book. All the book cover edges, the two book covers are open at 180 degrees. You're looking sort of sideways at it here. They're all equilateral triangles because the red edges are all the same length here. And the middle triangle, which is partway uh, standing, almost straight up but not quite, is the page that can go back and forth. It like oscillates between the two tips in an arc. It stays at the same height, but well, not at the same height above the covers, but the the uh, page is rigid. It's made out of uh, red edges, so that stays the same. The variables here are these other two edges, the bright green and the dark blue. Those would change as the page arcs back and forth, wags back and forth between the two covers. So when it stops here, click stops at this position you're seeing on screen, that's the regular tetrahedron, all edges the same, the bright green edge equal to 
the red edges, we call that unit volume in the Martian math world. But the way the Martians talk to their kids and explain to them how the Earthlings think, see, we go, we go to their schools as Earthlings and see how they explain Earthling math to themselves. And what they do is they all have Tetra book apparatus, we call it that, but the kids in Martian math school seem to think in terms of this Tetra book a lot. They use that as kind of one of their um, computing devices. And uh, when the tetrahedron is straight up, the edges are D except for the longer edge because it's a vertical page now. The page has gone to the vertical position up to 90 degrees to the book covers. That's what the earthlings consider to be unit of volume. It's a little bit bigger, in fact. It's, a, it's about 6% bigger in volume. And actually, this cube over on the right with edges R, in other words, half the length D, that's the same volume as this tetrahedron. So as Earthlings, we think in terms of a cube of edges R, and what the Martians tell themselves is, oh, the Earthlings think of unit volume as a tetrahedron in the, at the 90-degree position. And they understand that, and it's kind of like our ambassadors from Earth and Mars. They hammered out these conventions for going back and forth between Martian and Earthling units, because as I mentioned, we are trying to build a dam together in this particular science fiction version of the story. And you're welcome to make up, put new wrinkles into it. My recommendation is though you use the the uh, framework of a of a Martian meets Earthling scenario to impart some of this. American heritage, or by this time global heritage, uh, the Bucky way of thinking about geometry. It's interesting and in danger of uh, fizzling if we don't have anybody teaching it. So the paradigm's lost. The loss of uh, an interesting worldview is is what I'm concerned about. So I'm sharing all this in hopes that other teachers out there, literature teachers, and so on will uh, rescue American transcendentalism from oblivion by uh, sharing the, the hardcore math that's there at the center. So let's talk more in the future about all this. I hope that answers some of your questions, and uh, happy teaching.